Good morning. This is Deborah V. Wilson. It is the 10th of September 2017. The time is 1100 hours and 41 minutes and that's GMT minus 6 and I am in Canada. One of the things I like to do in my research is to look and understand where there are similarities. Um, when looking at political utterances or political movements. I think sometimes, it, particularly if political movements uh, position themselves as opposing to each other, I like to see, uh, I take, like to take a look at if there are any ways they are actually similar, even if they construct themselves and believe themselves to be in opposition. And in that light, I'm going to take a very brief look at an aspect of ISIL, Britain first, a political, grassroots political right wing organization out of the United Kingdom, and Rebel Media, uh, an online social media organization out of Canada. ISIL positions itself the way ISIL does. But one of the methods it uses to communicate how it positions itself is its encouragement of a certain style of dressing by women. ISIL encourages women within their ranks to be hypermodest, to completely cover. We all know that we've seen the images, we've we've heard the utterances, uh, uh, quote unquote, um, a good Muslim woman, what she looks like, what she should look like, what she should wear. Organizations like Britain First and Rebel Media would have you believe they're positioned themselves just the opposite. They look at the images of quote unquote jihadi brides and say, look at those people, look at those women, they're all covered up. You you've heard all the terms. They look like they're wearing potato sacks, it look it looks like a bin bag. I could go on forever, but I won't. You think if you were just simply to listen to the utterances in Britain first and rebel media, that they wouldn't dare use women's clothing on the bodies of women to facilitate their brand, but yet it does appear that they do. I would ask you to look at Britain first, some of their YouTube videos, and I am going to, within this podcast, provide the link to a playlist where I've looked at some of the videos. Jada Franzen, she is the host person of Britain First. I would ask you to look at her style of dress. I would ask you to look at the thumbnails on some of the YouTube videos. I would ask you to look at her hairstyle and how her hair is fashioned around her person. I would ask you to look at some of the camera shots. Come to your own conclusion. Then Rebel Media, I would ask you to look at the two of the now departed, they're no longer with the organization, news announcers, Faith Goldie and Lauren Southern. The interesting thing about both these women is they had a particular look whilst working at Rebel Media. I would venture to say, in the case of Jada Franson, Faith Goldie, and Lawrence Southern, their look seemed almost, in some respects, to be a hypersexualization of the female form, with the look of ISO, the women, the look they're encouraging, 
is a desexualization of women. I would argue that in all instances, it is clothing on the bodies of women that all three of these political utterances are utilizing to communicate and facilitate their brand. As I said, I have a playlist um, that you can look at where you can compare and contra contrast. You may disagree, and even if you do agree, you might come up with a completely different conclusion than I have. But I would ask you to take a look and see if you do find any similarities in the ways in which ISIL, on the one hand, Britain First and Rebel Media have positioned themselves and communicated their brand through the utilization of the female form and the clothing on the female form. You also want to focus very closely on Faith Goldie and Lauren Southern because, as I said, they're no longer with Rebel Media. And the interesting thing about it is the style of dressing. Their entire look has changed once they left the organization, Rebel Media. Make of that what you will. Anyway, take a look at the playlist after listening to this very brief podcast and come up with your own conclusion. Thank you. This is Deborah V. Wilson, and I am in Canada. Again, thank you.